So I was playing my favorite Genshin Impact clone, Breath of the Wild, when I decided to stop for a second and appreciate how the entire world is filled with millions of blades of beautiful flowing grass. Now you guys know me, I love me some sweet, sweet grass, but all of this grass appreciation has got me pondering, how the f*** is this game not crashing? Culling is a process used in video games to remove objects not visible to the player from the frame. There are two main types of culling used in video games, occlusion and frustum culling. Occlusion culling is a technique that optimizes performance by only rendering objects that the player can see. If you take a picture of a mountain, for instance, and there's a large grass field on the other side, the camera doesn't need to pick up and process the massive grass field sitting behind it. In video games, occlusion culling identifies which objects are hidden from the player's view because other objects such as buildings, walls, or other blades of grass are obstructing them. On the other hand, frustum culling only shows what's in front of the player. So the game engine creates a pyramid-shaped area called a frustum, representing what the player can see. The engine then checks which objects are inside the frustum and which ones are outside, and only renders the visible ones. By using frustum culling to render only the objects within the player's field of view, and then adding occlusion culling to remove the objects hidden by other objects, games can render a much smaller percentage of grass without the player ever noticing. But that doesn't explain everything. Even if we use culling to remove 99% of the grass, we still have to render hundreds of blades. So how do we optimize these blades of grass that we have to show? LODs, short for level of detail, is a 3D computer graphics technique that optimizes the rendering of objects based on their distance from the viewer. To make that easier to grasp, let's say you are a painter trying to finish a landscape painting quickly. You start with the foreground, putting in every leaf, every blade of grass, and every texture you can manage at the highest level of detail. But as you move further back into the background of your painting, you realize no one is really going to notice this, so you start slapping on broader brush strokes and using fewer details. It's not like anyone is going to notice, right? This is similar to how LODs work in video games. When grass blades are closer to the player or the camera, the game engine renders them in higher detail with more polygons. But as the player moves farther away, the engine switches to a simplified version of the grass. The simplified version uses fewer polygons and textures to render each blade, reducing the computational load on the engine. This explains the popping in of models that you can see sometimes when playing almost every video game. It's the LOD switching to a higher or lower poly version of the model. And don't worry, I'm gonna be doing a full video on culling, LODs, and a bunch of other stuff in the future where we can explore these concepts at a much deeper level. Breath of the Wild, for example, uses LODs extensively to optimize the rendering of grass and trees. In fact, the lowest detail trees in the game are just flat 2D textures or billboards, which is kind of hilarious. Some open world games that allow the player to see long distances take this a step further replacing entire fields of grass with a single LOD texture. Next time you're on a high mountain in Genshin Impact, or especially Ghosts of Tsushima, take a close look at the furthest away grass fields, and you'll see that some of them don't even bother rendering any grass. It's all replaced with a single texture mimicking an entire field, which is also kind of hilarious. Now, using culling and LODs together will leave you with some nicely optimized grass, but we can push this even further. Let's talk about GPU instancing. GPU instancing is a technique that efficiently renders many identical or similar objects in a video game by creating multiple copies of a mesh and using them in a single call. To explain how this works, let's say you are the most famous person on the planet, theoretically, obviously and you have millions of friends that you want to invite to your very fancy birthday party. Sending individual text messages one by one to all of them would take an eternity. So instead, you simultaneously send a mass text to everyone, so everyone receives the same text message at the exact same time. Similarly, a game engine uses GPU instancing to create a single mesh representing a blade of grass and generates many different instances of this mesh each with different properties such as color, scale, and orientation. All these instances are then grouped and sent to the GPU for rendering in a single draw call. GPU instancing isn't only used to render grass and other foliage. Many games use GPU instancing in very creative ways to create complex particle systems or to even populate entire worlds. Some games even use GPU instancing to simulate massive crowds, giving each person their unique animations and behaviors. But that 
is going to have to be another video. So yeah, grass is pretty cool.